Uh, ki te whanau e hui hui nei. I'll take this off. Tēnā koutou. Ko taku ingoa ko Claire Warren. No tamaki makoto aho e mahi ana aho. Ki te tari a te papa a te whai ki maunga wika. I roto i te wanganga, kaitiaki tanga. Kaitiaki aho i ngā motu ki ngā riha rāwaho nō re rā. Kia ora tato katoa. Uh, Morena, I'm Claire. I'm the Island Biosecurity Advisor for DOC for the Auckland region. And uh, I'm going to talk to you about horrible pests <laughs> that got to Mototapu Island. Just get this right. Good one. Okay. So, uh, yeah, stoats on Rangitoto Mototapu. Uh, you've probably heard about it, read about it. It got quite a bit of coverage. Um, so, yeah, a little bit about Rangitoto Mototapu to begin with. So the complex of the two islands, as you can see, pretty big, over 3,800 hectares. And uh, from, I'm just going to see, how, oh yeah, 11 kilometres as the crow flies across there and then across there. Uh, and most importantly, of course, um, it's swimming distance for a stoat. So that's three kilometres roughly, and of course it's a lot less if it's island hopping, say from here to here to here, uh, which led to a bit of a problem. Um, so yeah, a bit of history about stoat incursions. So the islands were made uh, stoat pest free in 2011, and in the 10 years since then we had only three stoats. Uh, however, <laughs> in the two years from 2020 to 2022, we had three stoats. So we have no idea why that is and there's probably quite a few theories. Maybe um, the sea conditions were a little bit warmer and calmer and was a little bit more conducive to stoat swimming or it could have been just that there was more propagule pressure from the mainland, more stoats maybe um, dispersing. So um, a timeline for the incursion so we detected our first stoat in May 2020, uh, Prince on the beach uh, and we were then stoat hunting um, until September 2020. So um, the first stoat hunting was regular trapping. And we caught a stoat in, uh, at the, in a trap near Rangitoto Wharf uh, in September 2020. And uh, one dog check, sort of using a mustelid dog to detect sign, one dog check after that and got nothing. We actually assumed it was stoat free again. So we got our uh-oh moment in November 2020 when, we, when our ranger found a dead shore plover on a nest um, on Motutapu Island and when that went off for a, a, a post-mortem, the um, person found stoat incisor marks on its head and also stoat um, DNA on it. So that actually pretty much confirmed, actually, no, we still have stoats. Uh, so <laughs> January, we caught another one on Motutapu this time in a Dock 200. And then um, from then on until November, we were stoat hunting um, and we caught that stoat, thankfully. And then it was another five months until we actually declared it pest free. So, um, mm. oh sorry, and that, that's the stoat there that was caught at Rangitoto Wharf. Just a bit of fluff. So this is actually the story about the third stoat that by 2021, well early 2021, we actually knew it was a male. So that's why with those references to he <laughs> in here. So um, just a bit about the ground response though. Um, around both islands, we've, our normal trap set up is that we've got 400 200s uh, and normally we're checking them monthly. Mm. But as soon as we went into the stoat response, we were checking them weekly. And you can imagine how many hours that takes of staff time. Um, through 2021, we realised that we needed to do a little bit more because was, um, we had one that was being a little bit incalcitrant. So uh, we also activated dormant incursion lines on Rangitoto. So they were the lines left over from the incursion, uh, sorry, from the eradication was um, back in 2011. And so there were traps still on the lines and they were still perfectly working. Um, we added these cunning things that we thought were really going to do the job, 150 double set run throughs. Um, so they're very big traps um, and I'll have a photo of them a bit later. So anyway, by mid 2021, we had over 650 traps being checked fortnightly. 
um, we downgraded the checks because we had more traps. It was just killing our staff getting around those two islands every week. Uh, and so, yeah, 100,000 trap nights, we think, by the end of it. And we tried many, many lures in those traps. Um, lots of, yeah, we had uh, social lures, so the bedding of stoats, penguins, um, rodents, different food lures, uh, just anything you can think of. And we even got sort of, we tried otapu <laughs> um, for a couple of months, thanks to the zoo, but uh, yeah, that didn't result in anything either. So that's what the trap lines looked like. Um, as you can see, it's um, more around the coast, um, across roads, around roads, along tracks. Um, and the dots, uh, the locations of them, and the colours are different lures that we tried. So we tried a variety and we tried to sort of space them out. Um, there's a lot of navy blue, and that's because just bear in mind that these traps also have to function as rodent traps as well. So we were trying to keep them attractive to rodents at the same time. So that's why there's still a lot of rabbit in blue dots. Um, so these are the traps. Um, that's a double set run through at the top. We had that specially designed by our technical advisors, and uh, it's got a um, quite a wide opening here. Um, and the idea being to sort of have as less of a visual barrier as possible for the for the stoat that we knew was out there. Um, it does have, you can only just see it, a bit of rebar across there to stop non-targets going in. Anyway, so it's over a metre long and it's extremely heavy um, when it's wet. <laughs> so I tried to move one the other day. Um, and the standard Dock 200s as well. So, yeah. Gosh, you know, by in the middle to late 2021, 20, we realised we were putting a lot of effort into traps that he was just walking straight past. So we clearly had to do something different. Um, and one of the tools in our toolbox were our muster lid dog search teams. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Brad Windust. This is Brad and Wero. Um, they were regulars out there. Wero is a scat detection dog. And there are other dogs that um, just work on scent. So we usually had a scent dog and a scat dog working at the same time and they were able to give us some really good information. Uh, and this is what we found. So that's a map of um, the sign that we found around the coasts. Um, and it actually only got, got the sign up to May 2021, but um, basically it told us that it was a coastal stoat. Um, so there's scats found in all these points, the odd cache, Scat, scat, scat. Um, after May, we found one out here, a scat. <laughs> and this is where the shore plovers were found. So, yeah, I mean, basically the stoat was using the entire islands, both of them, going around the coast. And if you've been on Rangitoto, you'll know what that coast's like. <laughs> Quite a mission for a small animal. Um, yeah, so um, we were trying different tools by now too, so uh, we were working quite closely with the Auckland Council Rangers at Shakespeare because at Shakespeare and Tafranui, they again were having quite a few stoat problems and they'd gotten onto these things called Edgar live catcher traps um, and they were putting them out in hot spots. So we thought, oh yeah, and they were actually having success with them so we thought we'd try that too. Uh, so we got a whole bunch of these. Um, so what they are, it's a, it's a live capture trap, it's wooden, and it's got a nest box on the end. So we lured the, the box with uh, stoat bedding, female stoat bedding, because we knew it was a male. Um, and we put them out at those hot spots that you saw on the map on the previous slide. Um, we also had fen traps and tunnels uh, at bird, shorebird hotspots, so where the shore plovers might be nesting or, you know, dotterels or um, other birds like that. And we also tried, um, you can see some quails in the corner there, they're, they're alive, um, chickens and quail. We put them in coops and put them in places where we knew that the stoat goes regularly. We tried everything, um, but we still couldn't catch it. Um, but one thing we did have uh, was Andrew Veal's captive stoat. So this is Aria. She's quite famous now. <laughs> um, he... Uh, he had that stoat and we were able to take some of our wooden devices to the stoat and have her sent them for us. Um, 
which was quite a good thing. And um, you probably don't know about stoats, but they get impregnated. Well, you might. Maybe you do, actually. Um, they get impregnated pretty much when they're babies. Um, so as it turns out, the stoat was pregnant the whole time. And that's going to become quite important for us further on in the response. So what else did we do? We had cameras uh, at pinch points or, you know, sort of narrow places where there wasn't much room for a stoat to go. Uh, plus, on some of those hot spots, you know, where we had put the Edgar traps. So this is um, footage from a thermal uh, camera that, that we had a, about three of those lent to, to us by Auckland Council. Um, and here's the stoat um, crossing uh, a road. So this camera was positioned at the causeway linking Rangitoto and Motutapu. That's the bridge there. And this is the Rangitoto side. So in this particular occasion, the stoat was going from North Rangitoto, just across the road, and went South Rangitoto. We got another image of it going that way from Rangitoto to Motutapu. And we had a bun somewhere else and we got another image of it. But really, we didn't get that many images of you know comparing how many hours we had those cameras running for. Um, we also had some ordinary trail cams out. Derry is there. Um, really difficult to get images of, of stoat that's moving fast in the landscape on one of these cameras. Um, we only got a small handful of images uh, using this method. So yeah, um, what did they tell us? Well, actually, not, not a great deal, unfortunately. Um, what we did learn was that he wasn't acting, interacting with the Edgar traps or the hen and quail live lures. Um, and what I told you about the causeway bridge, we know that he was using that at high tide because at low tide it's just mud flats all around the bridge and he was able to just walk around. Um, but it did tell us that we just needed to up the ante a bit. So here are Aria's kits and they were our most effective tool. So like I said, she was pregnant the whole time. Um, she was scenting the traps for us and then she gave birth in September. Uh, and we exploited the fact that uh, males have this strong drive <laughs> in around October to start mating. So um, her, her vocal, the, the, the kit's vocalisations were recorded and we used them in a fake den. So we had a few fake dens around the island um, and they're made of all material, uh, sorry, material found on site. So there was nothing human made in that den. And in the den, we put the kit playback, uh, some female bedding. So importantly, the female bedding was from a female that was in estrus. So uh, that really added more, you know, real life drama to this den. <laughs> And there was traps, of course, that's how we got it. And um, a bit of food sort of scattered around as well, you know, just to make it sort of more realistic for a mouse stoat. Um, this den that we caught it um, was positioned in a hot spot, oh, sorry, a, a sort of a pinch point where at high tide the stoat would have been forced right up into the vegetation uh, and close enough to hear the kits playing. In the top right, you can see the playback machine and around that we put the uh, the bedding and down here you can see um, Mark 6 fen traps. Um, normally you wouldn't use fen traps uh, to normally in normal circumstances catch a stoat but because we're in an incursion response here that was the recommended tool for it. Uh, yeah, thank you, next one. So as I've alluded to we got our result. That was how we caught the last stoat in November. So, um, as far as we know, Doc has never been able to catch a stoat using a, a sonic lure before. Um, so we think it might be a first, but there's a caveat on that. Because the den contained um, social lure, like the, the bedding that had female estrus on it, we don't know, if, in fact, if it was that bedding or the sonic lure that drew the stoat in to kill it. So we can't really be definitive either way. Okay, thank you. Um, so yeah, some key points about what we learned. Um, so the first one being uh, that it's really important, even if you're not an incursion, to post-mortem any dead things that you find. 
uh, because you know in our case we thought that we didn't have a stoat uh, after the first one was caught until the ranger found the dead shore plover so as I've mentioned yeah that showed that yeah actually we still got a stoat <laughs> um, when we didn't think we had one uh, so the next one is that yeah we actually well, that's all that scat that we found we used that to gain intelligence and it helped us it sort of gave us 50% of what we wanted to know because we wanted to know how many stoats and we wanted to know what sex they were as I've said females are always pregnant so if we had a female on the island that would have been a disaster she would have if we hadn't been able to catch her she would have given birth but um, I'm, we can go to the next one thank you um, what we actually found from the scats was that yeah they're all male uh, but um, so we got 50% of the story the other 50% was we couldn't really get an indication of how many stoats we were we had so for the DNA in 2020 uh, sorry the scats in 2020 we got no DNA from um, and then the scats that we tested in 2021 only one of them gave us a full genotype which said it was a male and when I say a full genotype of all the markers they test it could detect alleles on all those markers on three of the scats um, we only got alleles detected for about three one or two markers and unfortunately those alleles looked like they were different <clears throat> to the ones on the one that we got the full genotype for which suggested that actually maybe we've got two or three stoats on the island um, I've got my slides out of order a bit never mind um, but anyway the stat, scats also did tell us that um, when you look inside the content of the scat you know there's feathers we could got uh, Elaine Murphy our science advisor to have a look to see what it was actually eating and she was able to say yeah those are quail feathers or you know small passerines and um, we know from where the scats were found and the um, various other bits and pieces we found that it was probably going for penguins chicks and eggs um, shore plovers obviously and goodness knows what else thank you um, yeah so the dog handlers they were quite key to this um, for finding the scat but also you know the amount of scat they were finding so this is Angela Newport she's got Macca the one that detects scent and um, she was actually saying well actually we're only finding enough scat for one animal despite the fact that the DNA was saying potentially there could be sort of two or three um, so you know when you're running an incursion you've got to sort of weigh up what people are telling you and you really do have to assume the worst which is actually what we did <laughs> um, thank you um, so yeah we assumed after we caught the November one that there were more stoats uh, and uh, once we'd caught that stoat we cleared the island of all the scat so we just made sure there was none more and then we did more searches uh, which all had showed no stoats but you know the more searches we do the more confidence you can have um, about saying yeah we've got no more so we finally decided yeah we're pretty confident now <laughs> by, the, by April so that was when we um, decided not to go any further <laughs> so we thank you yeah that was it um, so yeah there's lots of things that we learned here um, so we had a trap shy stoat so we realized that um, something must have happened to it uh, you know and it's life on the mainland or even on the island perhaps and the key point is that you've only got one chance to kill a stoat with a trap because if it goes into a, goes into one and doesn't die and is roaming around the islands or whatever you're never going to catch it in a stoat again and it's not going to go anywhere near one so um, the important the lesson was that the traps have got to be perfectly set um, on the mainland especially at jumping off points and it's great to see you guys focusing on that um, to help protect the islands um, but yeah doubly important on the pest free islands as well that the trap sets have to be perfect um, yeah we just don't know where it went wrong thanks yeah the other thing too is that um, we know that stoats have individual preferences and behaviors so um, we used a variety of lures uh, because we just realized I mean normally we just put an egg uh, and some rabbit in a trap but hey <laughs> a stoat might not like rabbit <laughs> um, and it turned out to be the case for the second one that we caught which um, got lured in on salmon oil um, so yeah it's important to try a number of lures 
Uh, and the other thing is, yeah, as soon as you know you've got a trap shy stoat, you've got to start thinking outside the box. Um, uh, so, you know, that's why we sort of thought, okay, a standard Doc 200 is not going to do the job. Will something with a wider opening, you know, be more attractive to a stoat? Um, and that's why we went into the Edgar traps eventually, into um, using sex as the lure. Um, but the key to it is that before you start thinking about those different ways of trapping an animal, you've got to make sure that you've got the basics first. So you've got, because at any time another stoat could turn up or a rodent. Um, so you've got to make sure those traps are perfectly set all the time and always with fresh bait. Um, and then you can start thinking about other stuff. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, so, and the most important thing out there is that those islands are just brimming with lovely fresh food. Um, and why would a stoat, uh, you know, go for something manky old rabbit in a trap when there's some delicious fresh shore plover or penguin chicks out there? Um, so we had to think, well, what can we do to trump that? Um, so, you know, the lure, because of the time of year and the fact that we had those um, the kit recordings, we realised we probably had a chance if we um, exploited his behaviour to, to mate. Um, so yeah, the lure of sex was the thing <laughs> that did the trick. So, um, and this is where like a knowledge of the um, seasonal sort of physiological cycles and behaviour of stoats is important. Um, and, and as you know, I'm sort of repeating myself a bit here, but the males and females do have seasonal cycles, and including, you know, the male can't just go and mate all year round. He's actually fully fertile only August to February. Um, and because the females give birth around October and enter estrus soon after, it makes them quite attractive mates. <clears throat> so, as I've mentioned, the female kits are usually impregnated when they're just a few week days old. So, we really wanted to exploit the male's drive to mate um, using those, those kit recordings. So, um, you know, the, the timing was perfect. Thank you, Aria, um, because if we tried that fake den scenario outside um, uh, mating season, it probably wouldn't have worked. Thanks. And um, one last thing. Um, so we were planning to use toxin. Uh, PAP, which I won't endeavour to pronounce, <laughs> it's a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> um, the thing is, as far as we know, it still hasn't been done on a pest-free island before. So PAP's only been used, um, you know, in those mainland scenarios. Um, so the planning for it was nightmarish. Uh, we, you know, we just, yeah, everything was different because it was a pest-free island and we had to figure out, okay, how many times are we going to you know, re-deliver PAP, because you don't just do one application, you do it multiple times. Um, and, you know, obvious problems, because we had a trap-shy stoat that wasn't going to eat anything that we gave it. Um, so it's only registered for delivery in mince balls, <laughs> dyed green in a bait station. So, gosh, you know, we would had already planned how we were going to get around that. Um, uh, so we were investigating natural bait stations, uh, which were sort of like within the definition of a bait station from the EPA, um, but not with man-made materials. So still fulfilled all those requirements like um, not letting non-targets get in, uh, keep it off the ground, you know, things like that. Um, so we were investigating that and we were thinking, well, how can we get a stoat to eat mince? So we were wondering about putting it into some, inside some really tasty, uh, chicks or something. Anyway, um, we never had to do it, thankfully, because we caught the stoat and also we were advised to put on hold because uh, the PAP currently is not having its required efficacy and I know that's about to be resolved. Yeah. So, what did it all cost? Well, um, 300000 I think that's probably on the low side. That's what our SAP is saying. <laughs> um, and what it consisted of was the things that we were using in the field, so and people, contractors, casual staff, traps, bits and pieces, lures. Um, we borrowed all the cameras 
and you know the incursion management staff time wasn't included in that so and there are other indirect costs so I mean I would imagine it was probably closer to 400,000 but um, yeah it's pretty expensive business uh, doing that and having to maintain it for two years and that was the stoat. Has anyone got any questions? Have I got time? Hello, yeah. hi. hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm interested in um, that you could detect that there are stoats around just by looking for scat. Yeah. And I suspect lots of us around here suspect that there are stoats all around us, but we're not seeing them in tracking tunnels or catching them in traps. Is looking for scat a useful way of knowing whether there are stoats around us? Uh, yes. Potentially, um, you'd have, yeah, I guess so. I guess you'd have to know what a scat looks like. They're quite hard to see. And, you know, I'm really only about that long and dried out and horrible and manky looking. So you'd have to know whether it was a cat, stat, scat, or some other thing that was like it. Um, it, it's quite a it's quite a specialist thing. And, and um, a do detection dog is probably the best way, although, you know, our rangers got quite good at finding it, but we knew where to look. <laughs> so, I mean, in our case, we knew, uh, we knew that, you know, when you've only got one or two animals in such a lad large ant landscape, you have to use a, a special tool to find it. Um, but yeah, if they're more common out there, then this is no harm in looking, but you just gotta know where to look. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um. <laughs> sorry, uh, lady first, yeah. Yeah, that's a really good question. We really wanted to know that. Uh, we can tell you where it didn't come from. <laughs> so we know it didn't come from Waiheke. Um, so there is quite a bit of data, old stoat DNA data in a database. Uh, but, and Andrew Veal's work was showing that um, the Waiheke stoats have got quite a distinct genetic signature because there isn't a lot of um, stoats coming and going from that population. So we can quite confidently say that the stoat didn't come from Waiheke. However, because on the mainland there's obviously populations all the way around um, and stoats are pretty mobile, so the genetic signature of the populations is constantly changing. And because the database was a little bit old, we couldn't reliably say, oh, the stoat was from over there, it was from the North Shore, it was from Powick, or it was from there, because, yeah, there's just too much... Oh, what's the word? You, could, you couldn't be confident, yeah, about where it was coming from. So yeah, hope that answers the question. <laughs> Sorry. What was the basis for the concentration of cat, uh, traps around the coastline rather than inland? Is that peculiar to the terrain on the same coastline? Yeah, um, it's a result of if you get an incursion, then the first place the animal is most likely to arrive is at the coast. So they are, they're there, I mean, that's part of our normal defence network. Um, and based on the fact that the animal is going, to, it's an easy way to get around because, you know, there's not much in its way around the coast. And also there were, you'd see that there was traps along roads and walkways. And animals most likely to use open spaces to get around. Um, so that's why they were there. I mean, easier for us to access too. <laughs> um, but as you'll see, I mean, we did... Uh, we did open up those traps on Rangitoto across, you know, and that was across pretty gnarly terrain and very difficult to access. So we did open that, but anyway, hopefully that ask, answers your question about the coastal traps. So I think I saw... Hi. Not as far as I'm aware. Um, it's a really good question, actually. So I know that uh, Lincoln, that Andrew Veal, who has that stoat, he's gone to, he's moved to Christchurch now and works for Lincoln. And as far as I know, he's still got the stoat. And Doc and Lincoln work pretty closely together. Um, and they're used, you wouldn't want to take a stoat to an island to use it in that respect. But yeah, I mean, they've got stoats there that they use for a, you know, trialling things like trialling new traps or um, new toxins and things like that. So, 
yeah, that probably didn't directly answer your question, but um, there are stoats that are being used for such purposes. Hi. Yeah, um, fascinating talk. Lots we can learn from it. Do you know if the results and, and the learnings from this will be published anywhere? Like we've got your presentation today. About yeah. Um, people would, would love to learn about them. Yeah. Um, so where we're at, I mean, this is, did I say it at the beginning? This is, yeah, the first time I've presented anything since the incursion. Um, we haven't, we're just in the process of running the debrief and there'll be sort of doc learnings from that and then that's at that point we'll be starting writing papers and recommendations and things like that and uh, Andrew Veal is also quite interested in doing something <laughs> which we'll probably collaborate with him on. Anyone else? Yes, um, so they are, they are saved and um, if anybody wants to use them, Andrew has said go right ahead but ask them first. <laughs> so yeah, they are available if anyone needs to use them for incursions. Anyone else? Cool, alright, thanks everyone. Thank you.